uh, the fifth in that series, uh, deals with the key causes of illness, which has to do with, you know, people's stressful reactions to the challenges of life, you see? And, um, you know, science, you know, for the last 100 years or so, you know, uh, is in agreement that a major cause of illness is st stress, but they have not been able to fully understand, you know, the mechanisms of stress and how to, you know, counteract its negative effects. Now, African Americans are subjected to specific type challenges. You see that? And uh, so that, you know, we are going to be addressing the kind of challenges that black men in particular face. And to give them a proper understanding, you know, on how to meet these challenges through certain nutritional supplements, diet, and spiritual techniques, meditation, and qigong, and so forth, uh, so that um, we can begin to uh, improve and bring a solution to one of the biggest problems in the black community, you know, which is the health of black men. Um, as uh, we stated, showed last year, we have the highest morbidity, okay, um, you know, and mortality, you know, uh, statistics than any other ethnic group in America, and even in many um, so-called uh, poor countries. We have many workshops, and um, the expo is primarily directed at black men because a major cause of illness or a means of healing has to do with psychology or spirituality. And uh, so there are things that, you know, we have to discuss openly, black men to black men. You see that? And, you know, there's not going to be the openness if they are women at certain events and some of the workshops, and people of other ethnic groups. In other words, nobody wants to open up their weaknesses and their, their laundry in front of another group. You see that? Yes. Um, there are some of the workshops that perhaps women can attend, but then there are others that you know only black men should attend so they can be free to openly discuss the things you know, that as black men, you know, we, you know, part of, you know, healing is just not simply take this medicine or this antibiotic or this drug or this supplement. A lot of it has to be, you know, uh, face your errors, you know, face and change, you know, your outlook, your mentality. And we're not going to have an open discussion about, you know, you know, men to men, black men to black men, if they're women and other groups present. So it's not a discrimination kind of a thing. You see that it's just simply, and, and the thing is, there's a president for that, there are women's conferences, always. Yes. And, and, and it's all women because they think that women are not gonna discuss in front of men. Exactly. And it shouldn't be that way, you see exactly. that. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ryle and Nefra Amen the first for being here with us today and sharing some insights into the Black Men Holistic Health Expo. Thank you very much. The issue really has to do with the knowledge base that health practitioners are working with with respect to dealing with their health problems. So I would say that both white and black men, they don't get the kind of information that they need. But um, the issue of black men receiving quality health care Right? I mean, the role of racism in the health care of, of black men of, of any financial standing has been well documented relative to the quality of care they receive within mainstream health. So um, black men, we have to speak to one another. And fine, I happen to be a health professional, so there's information that I can bring to that. But I haven't um, solely relied on what I've learned in medical school. 
because to do that would um, put me in a position of, of giving limited information that the whole population is actually receiving. Um, I'm a graduate of Yale Medical School. I practice acupuncture and Chinese medicine for about 30 years. I've done homeopathy, I've you know, studied in Europe. Um, I do something called applied kinesiology. Um, I'm one of the few practitioners that actually does stem cell therapy um, with patients. And I do energy healing as well. So, I, and you know, people say, why do you do so many things? Well, you know, you run into blocks with patients they don't get better from what you already know. So you continue to want to learn new things mm -hmm. so that you can help people who you haven't been able to help previously. Nobody wants to get old. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to get old where they can't function, right? Where they can no longer function at their peak in terms of whatever it is they're doing. Um, and that's an issue that I mean, in any community, I'll see people reaching for tonics, whether it's tonics from the Korean store, whether it's from GNC. Everybody wants to find an elixir that somehow is going to help them to repair, right? The issue with the hormonal system, or if we talk about the endocrine system in general, from the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid, all the way down, that's tied in with your energetic body, your etheric body, or your chakra system. As you get older, all of those chakras begin to, to dissipate in terms of their vibration, their energy. So we see people as they get older, um, people are hypothyroid and don't even know it. You have more people that are diabetic, you know, helped along by diet, but energetically, they can't maintain the vibration that allows the pancreas to function properly, right? Not to mention the gonads just shut down. So for men, we're talking more about a process that would be called menopause, which is different from menopause, which is more sudden and the hot flashes and everything. With menopause, a man will notice that all of a sudden his erection is no longer reliable, or the stimulus that would incite an erection, it no longer incites that erection. Or in the morning, he's waking up and the erection is no longer happening. Or he's received medication from a doctor, which is now impairing that process, right? So all of this is clouding on the psyche. Generally, it's a middle age. Middle-aged black man in this society is basically going to be overwhelmed with, you know, much like the, re the rest of the population, but the added race piece is always there and has to be acknowledged. But it's going to be concerned about their financial state, about what their future looks like, providing for their children, what they're going to do for themselves when they retire. They got all those concerns, and then all of a sudden, they realize that something is not happening that they are relied on, relied on both in terms of giving them comfort, helping with their relationships. All of a sudden, that's not there. To put that within a holistic framework, a lot of times guys want to know, what's my testosterone? You know, do I have enough testosterone, right? Well, testosterone is not the only player, right? People don't realize that in taking, let's say, statin drugs, or drugs that lower cholesterol, you actually might be cutting yourself off at the knees. Why? Because cholesterol is the um, primary chemical unit from which you make testosterone. From which you make is a whole cascade that takes place, pregnenolone, progesterone, testosterone. So you can't just check one hormone. And then you have to look at, you know, how the person, what their cholesterol is. You have to look at a male's estrogen. Because your estrogen might be high, which means all of a sudden, you know, brothers are growing buds, you know, because all of a sudden testosterone is being converted into estrogen. And then that's the problem. And then you have to block that. But if you block it too much, you lead to other chemical consequences. You know, so it can, that's why botanicals, which have the effect of not just you medicating. You herbs. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have the effect of not just medicating, but healing are so much more superior. Because you might take a drug to block one thing, but the drug is doing other things. And the drug, um, 
It can't deal with the physiologic changes that are taking place as you move through taking it maybe a month or two months. So that drug that, let's say you took something, Proscar, Avidar, to deal with a, a problem of this conversion of estrogen, testosterone to estrogen, is doing one thing for a couple months, but then over several months, other things begin to happen. So, so and you haven't really healed or changed the primary problem. I think there's more power in botanicals because they have the ability to heal and not just medicate. So when you're taking a formula, you're also boosting the nutritive chi. You're getting to the kidney gene or to, to, to the, uh, the energetic core. And the chi is that energy in, in right, the person's body. Right, the chi is an energetic body, right? Mm -hmm. But they're all kind of, you know, in Western medicine, there aren't a lot of words for energy because the culture is limited mm -hmm. in that respect. The same way, like, when we talk about spirit, Western culture is very limited. They talk about spirit. Right. In African culture, there are all kind of words because the cultural reality is different, different such that those distinctions can be made. The same thing energetically with the body. Okay. There are all kind of distinctions that can be made energetically with what's happening. Is it kidney jing? Is it kidney yin problem? Is it liver yin, liver blood deficiency? So there are these subtle distinctions that Western pharmaceutical can't even approach. A Western doctor can't even approach. The Western doctor will rely more on laboratory more than anything else. Okay. And you learn some basic tools with respect to checking to see if your conception vessel or rim channel is open if your governing vessel along your spine is blocked, mm -hmm. right? To actually get an idea, well, energetically, is my stuff just that weak? You know, sometimes an adjustment to the low back can reinvigorate the, you know, the sexual vitality. Sometimes a low back pain represents not just a deficiency in testosterone, but a weakness in the adrenal glands. Or maybe the kid, all of a sudden, you notice that you're waking up at night to urinate. You, that didn't happen before. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, how would you actually address that as part of an overall constellation of symptoms that now represents where you're at in your the state of life? Well, I think black men as well as the rest of the population are suffering from obesity. Okay. And I always tell women, the bigger the stomach, the lower the testosterone. Because of fat, it makes that estrogen. And that estrogen will actually affect, you know, overall male functioning. Okay. So it really comes back to that, okay. you know, okay. um, what a person is eating and just the energetic hygiene. You know, if you're not sleeping as a male, you are not recharging your batteries properly. Mm -hmm. So you're going to drain yourself of more of your vital essence because you can't replenish that. Gotcha. So it's a bigger problem. So. And, you know, you might say, well, gosh, I'm not really overweight, but then we gotta look at other things. And mm -hmm. if you really, you know, for most guys, they know what it was like when they were young, or they were healthy. And at different points, they've introduced, you know, different habits and things. And in the back of their mind, they know what they're doing is actually detracting from their health. Mm -hmm. It's just whether they choose to make the to make adjustment. adjustment not, so I try right. to find those points. I try to get you in the zone where you actually will really talk so that we can nail down what it is, what it is. so that you can be really clear. Yes, your intuition was right. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sanyaku Shepsamare, and welcome again to the Black Men's Holistic Health Expo interview series. Today, I have the uh, pleasure and opportunity of introducing Kazimbe Bidiako, who is not only a health practitioner, but also a very good friend of mine that I've known most of my adult life. And today, we're going to talk about his workshop. And um, I think you'll find uh, the workshop that he's going to give and what we're going to cover something of, of interest to you. So I'd like to welcome you and like to Thank like you. to see you again as usual. Right. So the reason for this workshop is that black men are more likely to fall victim to the same diseases as other as, as other social groups, mm -hmm. and in many cases, black men are more likely to, to suffer two to ten times more from those same diseases than their white counterparts. So. 
right now there's a disparity in healthcare regarding when we talk about black men. This workshop is designed to address some of those issues, right? And we'll be we offer some of the health issues or some of the health disparities. Both some of the health issues mm -hmm. as well as, as health disparities. Okay. But our main thing in, in this workshop is basically to let the black men know that this is a holistic workshop. As we go older, right, our mechanism is not as effective as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So there's less energy. The energy to push the blood, to push the energy throughout our organ system. So then we have what we call stasis or stagnation. Or if it's not stagnation, then it's deficiency where we don't have enough um, inputs to push that, that, that whatever we need to do. So the excesses come from um, the imbalance, right? So if we are doing something in excess, we're exercising too much, we're not sleeping right, we, Riding the we're too working, much, doing, doing anything too much. Anything too much results in an excess. And, mm -hmm. and an excess results in an imbalance in the system. And the, 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 a lot of our statistics now prove that especially for black men, because they're, they're less likely to see a healthcare practitioner until something acute happens. So you catch the disease later on as opposed to earlier, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of diseases, like for example, for prostate for black men, mm -hmm. it is known that if you're over 50, you should get your prostate checked, right? But what kind of health things do you do to maintain that when you get to 50, you're not gonna have prostate cancer. Right. Right? right. Um, what kind of foods do you eat? What kind of um, excesses do you have that will allow you to, um, by the way, every time you have sex and you lose your seat, you're also losing a very essential part of your being. I'm, at, I'm actually on the verge of bringing out a, um, a publication called The Leaves of Life. And it's basically a compilation of herbs from Guyana, and it's talking about its municipal um, uses of herbs. Um, that's very important. Botanicals, um, herbs are very important because most of this pharmaceutical drug industry built their practice from drug from herbs, right? They take the plants, they um, analyze it, and they extricate certain types of chemicals that then go on to form your statin drugs or your um, cholesterol drugs or your heart drugs, right? Um, curare, which is one of the plants that's found in Guyana, that's often been used for fish poisoning, it's one of the critical herbs that are used in um, cardiac um, operation surgery to, um, to calm the muscles and calm the system. It's used as an anesthesia, right? Um, one of the biggest, um, for, for men, um, prostate, stainless nettles, Another herb that is germane and indigenous to Guyana is also um, one of the herbs that is used to help with men prostate, help to reduce the size, the inflammation of the prostate so that it shrinks, and it also helps to address the inflammation that causes cancer. Um, herbs are an integral part of any practice, especially when it has a holistic. It's an integral part. About 40 to 50 percent of my patients get um, herbs. Right, when they come into the physical, mm -hmm. right? And the part of that is that it, once you move, once you walk out of that office, you need something that you need to do to continue the, the health plan until you get back there again. Mm -hmm. And herbs have, have been known to be very effective, right, in addressing many of the issues. I haven't, I, you know, there's a big um, propaganda or um, um, uh, marketing piece that I put at the back of the book to say there's a herb for every illness. Right? And literally, I do believe that. That's right. Right? Um, for, for the male system, for the female reproductive system, mm -hmm. for cancer, for illnesses, mm -hmm. right? The basis of all chemical um, um, treatment is herbal. And so what I do, I believe in going back to the, to the herb itself. When you look at that plant, right, and the chemical composition of that plant, it is designed to work as a whole. When you separate certain chemicals and put it to work outside of that, that, that capacity, then you get then you, what, we, what we call, you begin to get the actual genetic illnesses. You begin to get illnesses as a result of those um, drugs. Well, can because you explain? Because it's outside of that chemical composition. 
That's very important. I'm glad that you said that, that the, the, the properties and the chemicals that are found in herbs right. were designed to work within a, a construct, within exactly. a, a system. Um, how do you find acupuncture? Um, one of the things that uh, one of our, our last uh, interviewer, uh, Dr. Kakai, we talked about was that we, have, we, we are also energy systems. And some people say, well, you know, we're black people, what are we going to Chinese for? And, um, and I know that you've studied and learned that it was, it was through the Chinese that they, you know, that we've kept the, the, the knowledge of the maps of the, how the energy flows in our body. Okay. So how, how did the acupuncture uh, um, uh, come together with the herbs? Acupuncture is a 3,000 year old practice. It has been proven effective, right? It is not an, a 300 year old medical system. It's been there for almost 3,000 years now. Now, most acupuncturists will acknowledge that before acupuncture, there was herbology, right? It was the herbs first, then the acupuncture came on as an addendum towards enhancing treatment approaches, right? So, um, but acupuncture itself outlines a map of energy system that works throughout the body, right? Um, most of us, when we hurt, we acknowledge this system, right? We will tell you that there are certain parts of our system that hurt that is not visible, right? Um, but and we know that when, we, when we, we press a certain part of our body, whether we use acupressure, um, or acupuncture with the force of a needle, we're able to redirect that energy system to its right? proper, you know, to you, to, to its proper course. course, to its proper course, towards balancing back out the, the body. So, do you use herbs or acupuncture? I use uh, both. Primar both. But what do you use primarily for the emotional and mental balance? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Um, acupuncture as well as um, herbs address mental, physical, so, um, and spiritual well-being, right? Um, the, 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 to use one without the other, it may be effective, but the, the true component or the true typical um, enhancement of a treatment approach is basically to use these combinations. And, and outside of that, there's also India. There's also Ayurvedic medicine that has another way of looking at these energy systems. In Africa, we have different ways of looking at the energy systems. In South America, right, you have the, the different um, Indian populations that have indigenous Indians that have historical ways of viewing the, 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 um, the energy systems within the body. But one thing that we have in common is that we all acknowledge that there is something beyond the physical. Forty percent of black men die prematurely of heart disease. One in seven, HIV. One in ten, hypertension. Right. One in eight. Hypertension. Of, yes. One in eight of violence. So the statistics keeps going on and on. Right. Um, somewhere along the line, there must be some communication about why we need to stop doing what we're doing. Right. There's a whole generation that's being written off right now, right? Some of us say that there's a, um, the black man, describe the black man as an endangered species because this type of statistics, right? Some of us are saying that the next generation, right, will not be as healthy, will not be as productive as this generation as a result of these chronic and acute illnesses that we are witnessing among this population right now. So it's, it's critical you know, um, a lot of our expos look at the crisis among black health. Indigenously more about black men, right? But black women also have those same statistics. A little better, but it's almost the same thing. So this health expo, what we are trying to do is to start this dialogue among young black men, about older black men, why they need to look at their health, why it is incumbent that the things that they do do not only affect them, it affects the health of their family, it affects their children, it affects their wives, it affects everyone else. And we need to start looking at it from that perspective. Because if we continue to 
to act and eat and drink and socialize the way we do right now, there will not be a next generation. 